You want to run a sandbox campaign. You're excited about running a game where the players are empowered to choose or define what their next scenario is going to be. You prep your world, the players roll up their characters, and the first session begins. You're in the village of Karamanok, in the realm of the Seventh Nexus. What do you want to do? And the entire table gives you a blank stare. The players have no idea what to do. I've talked to a number of GMs who have experienced this. Sadly, some of them have concluded that their players don't want or can't handle choosing their own goals. My players, they say, want to be led around by the nose. I've also talked to players who have been on the opposite side of this experience. Some of them have reached the same conclusion. They didn't like the complete lack of direction in the sandbox, and they'd much rather have a GM provide them with a plot than to sit in a featureless void trying to entertain themselves. The problem, of course, is that there was nothing to do in the village of Karamanok. And there wouldn't be, right? That's the player's job. It's a sandbox. The whole point of the sandbox is that the players are supposed to be deciding what to do. A scenario hook is the GM telling the players what they're going to do. Therefore, there are no scenario hooks in a sandbox. But what if I told you that this was completely wrong? A good sandbox actually has scenario hooks hanging all over the place. The successful sandbox will not only be festooned with scenario hooks, it will also feature some form of default action that can be used to deliver more scenario hooks if the players find themselves bereft of options that interest them. Now, for example, a classic wilderness exploration sandbox using a hex crawl will usually feature a rumor table, which serves up some arbitrary number of scenario hooks to the PC. It will also have a default action if none of those rumors sound appealing and the players don't have a better idea. The PCs can always pick a direction and start walking until they spot something interesting. Remember that a sandbox campaign is one in which the players are empowered to define or choose what the next scenario will be. This can include them creating goals out of whole cloth. For example, they might decide to become Lord Mayor of Karamanok, defining that scenario for themselves. But it can also be choosing to explore Undermountain, which they can only do if they know Undermountain exists, if you give them a scenario hook for Undermountain. Prepping this plethora of scenario hooks can be daunting for a GM who believes that every scenario hook needs to be linked to a distinct, unique plot. The trick of a sandbox, though, is that you don't prep plots. You prep situations. And in a sandbox, you'll be able to hang countless hooks off of every situation. You'll also discover how sandbox situations stay alive even after the PCs have interacted with them, rather than being completely chewed up and discarded like a plot. For example, let's say you've got a dungeon a fair distance outside of Kermanok that's the remains of a neo norskan temple complex. It's currently being occupied by a bandit king who has forged together a loose alliance of humans, goblins, and ogres. He's also renting skeletons off a nearby necromancer. In terms of scenario hooks, there's all kinds of stuff you can hang on in this situation. Uh, bandit raids are terrorizing local villages. Uh, a powerful magical artifact was stolen from a local caravan. There are old legends about the neo norskan temple and what it contains. Uh, because of the skeleton, there are false rumors that the necromancer lives there, or that the necromancer has allied with the bandit king. And you can salt these scenario hooks into the campaign in a number of ways. Uh, rumor tables, a lore recovered from other locations, the allies of the PCs who are now in need, a local merchant hiring guards to protect his caravans, and so forth. So, one day, the PCs grab one of these hooks, and they go off and they kill the bandit king, and they take the magical artifact he was carrying. Over and done with, right? Only not really, because the guy who originally owned the magical artifact still wants it, and now the PCs are being attacked by bounty hunters attempting to recover the artifact. Meanwhile, they didn't wipe out all the bandits, and the remaining goblins are renewing their raids under the leadership of the One-Eyed Ogre. So the PCs go back to the Neo-Norskan Temple, and this time they wipe out all the bandits, permanently ending their threat to the region. Except now, the Necromancer sees a big open dungeon complex filled with the discarded corpses the PCs have left in their wake, and so he moves in and animates the corpses as a skeletal army. Now, all of this might sound like a lot of work, but because you prepped the whole thing as a situation to begin with, you haven't needed to spend more than about five minutes refreshing this content between sessions. 
You're reusing the same maps and stat blocks over and over again. You spent a little time putting together new stat blocks for the uh, bounty hunters when they showed up, and there was probably some light rekeying necessary for the changes the necromancer made when he took over the temple. But you didn't have to buy a whole new set of tools every single time. You just occasionally added a new tool, and, and sometimes removed a tool that the PCs had broken, like the bandit king that they killed. Now, this kind of process can be easier to visualize with a location, like the neo norskan Temple, which is why I used it as an example, of course. Uh, but the same basic process holds true for, say, factions in an urban campaign. Uh, for example, create a gang that's manufacturing and marketing a drug derived from the blood that's been harvested from vampires, and you should be able to use that toolkit to generate dozens of sessions of play from the gang, the vampires, the drug, etc. The other thing that happens in a sandbox campaign is synergy between the different elements of the sandbox. By holding on to the artifact that was stolen from them, for example, the PCs make enemies of House Nabuzo. This unexpectedly earns them a patron in the form of House Erskine, unleashing a flurry of scenario hooks from the feuding noble houses toolkit you designed. As the PCs get drawn into the world of the noble houses, they're approached by a minor house named Tenor. Tenor is currently allied with House Nabuzo, but their daughter has been murdered by the necromancer, who has now stolen her body in order to transform her into his corpse bride. If the PCs can rescue their daughter from a fate literally worse than death, Tenor will break their alliance with House Nabuzo and pledge for House Erskine. Now, after that scenario has resolved itself, you might find that the players are now actively looking for other minor houses that they can endear to their political causes by doing favors for them. Not only is this an example of the players defining a scenario for themselves, they've organically created an entirely new default action for delivering scenario hooks in the form of these favors. If they don't have any better idea about what to do next, they can now always go to another noble house and ask, what can we do for you? Once your sandbox toolkits start interacting with each other like this, you'll quickly discover that your sandbox is basically running itself. Which should leave you with plenty of time to draw your dirk and backstab that subscribe button. Uh, take a second to leave a comment too, and let me know what other aspects of running a sandbox campaign you'd be interested in hearing about. Uh, don't forget to drop by the font of all knowledge, too. I'll be leaving some links about prepping situations down there, along with a link to my Patreon, where you can support new videos and other GM advice. Good gaming. This is Justin Alexander, and I hope to see you at the table.